Welcome to the Science of Fiction. My name is David. I'm Dylan. And we're back. It's been a little while. Um, we had intended to do this podcast like once every couple weeks, but we've just been, I don't know, our schedules haven't been lining up. Um, so it's kind of just whenever we can. We're trying to get consistent with it, but a little tough right now. Uh, but if you're joining us for the first time, what we do on this podcast is we look at different fictional universes and we basically analyze them for all of the things that stand out or maybe don't get explained that well or sometimes just straight up don't make sense and are like wacky shit. Um, we're not here to like criticize the movies for that. It's just supposed to be like a comedy podcast, an entertainment podcast. We're here to have fun and talk about movies we like. Uh, on that note, we are actually talking about a movie we like this time. The last couple weeks uh, or last couple episodes... We did what Shrek and Twilight. <laughs> hey, I, I like Shrek. Let's not. Let's don't. No put words in my mouth. <laughs> well, I'm the biggest Twihard there is, so that's everybody true, knows that's that. True. I do um, know that about you. But no, actually, we're talking about a great movie this time, Blade Runner. Um, although some people don't like Blade Runner, to be fair, uh, a lot of people think it's too boring. I personally really, really love Blade Runner. Um, I just rewatched. I think we both just rewatched it, right? Yep. Yep. Which is yeah, completely coincidence. It wasn't even planned at all. Right. And. Um, Obviously, there's a new one coming out. It's kind of why we're doing this episode. Um, if you didn't know, there are also a few shorts that have come out on YouTube. I don't remember the channel you can watch them on. It's Warner Brothers or something. Um, uh, actually have I actually Whatever. I don't even... Is Warner Brothers doing this? Whoever's doing it. Yeah, it's Warner Brothers. Uh, Pictures. Yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, but they're really cool. There's one that's an anime one, and the other two are live action. Mm-hmm. Uh, one's set in 2022, one's 2036, and one is 2048. Um they're cool. Check them out if you haven't. We'll, we'll go into them a little bit probably as we talk about some of the universe stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so just in case, like, spoilers for those if you haven't seen them. Um, although they're not, like, you know, things that are crazy spoilers. Not really spoilers, anyways. no. I mean, the whole but point just, with those just in was case. to, like, give you a nice build-up before the movie comes yeah. out. Yeah. Which I think was a great um, idea. That's a really cool idea. Definitely, yeah. And it was cool to see... Um, I mean, the, the 2036 and the 2048 ones seem very much in line with what the movie will look and feel like. But the 2022, the anime one, uh, is done by the guy who did uh, Cowboy Bebop and Mm -hmm. uh, Samurai Champloo. That one's really cool. Um, It's interesting to see the universe done from such a different perspective and tone. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't want the movie to be like that, tonally. But it's cool to see as, like, a side thing. Um, Anyways, I should also point out, I don't know if people... I mean, this is probably self-explanatory. Probably goes without saying, but we're we're using the final cut, uh, the uh, that version of it because that's considered the most canon, I believe, even by the director. Although there's not a ton of differences between the director's cut and the final cut that I'm aware of. I know there's a couple small things, um, but I don't and I don't know if that really affects the lore either way. Uh, but just so we're clear on that. Anyways, let's get into it. I think that this is also going to be a shorter episode, but I think the big thing we're going to start with is just the replicants themselves. Um, yeah, I mean, by far it's the most interesting thing about this whole entire universe. Really, Yeah, the, it's pretty main, much main the bread different. and butter of yeah, Blade Runner. Yeah. Um, because the original movie, and obviously people know this, but just pointing out, it's just a no, it's a noir. It's a classic detective story mm-hmm. with like all of the cliches, all of the things you know, which I think is why some people don't like it. I think they expect this crazy sci-fi movie, and while it is that, it's not Star Wars, and it's not... You know, right, right. Uh, anything like that. It's it's a detective story set in this unique universe. But what makes it so interesting over it's a standard detective story set in a sci-fi universe is the idea of these Blade Runners. Or, or not Blade Runners, sorry. The idea of these replicants. The idea of artificial humans, which are m- more human than. Um, the idea that they can have fake memories, mm-hmm. their own emotions. Um, do, they, do they eat, by the way? I don't know if they've ever established that. I don't believe so. Interesting. Um, I don't think that they... That's another thing I want to talk about, though, is, like... And this is something that comes up in a lot of science fiction about robots, is, like, what... How do they work, and how are they made exactly? Mm-hmm. Um, which can be kind of a boring question. Sometimes it's better just be like, I don't know, they work. But that's why our podcast is here, to talk about all the bullshit stuff. Because, um, yeah, they don't appear to eat. They don't appear to drink. Um, I assume they're made to look like people... Just so that it maybe would be less weird than having, like, you know, a C-3PO sure. looking thing. Um, although it is interesting that they continue to manufacture it. Although I guess Tyrell's whole thing was more human than that. Like, that was their whole logo. So it makes which, sense that they were trying which to that. Which to me I think that it's so absurd, though, because, like, yeah, they're more human than humans. 
but their only purpose is to basically do the stuff humans don't want to do, and they don't want them to be a part of society, so why bother making them like that at all, then? I guess some of them are meant to be in society, because there's, like, pleasure models, which are supposed to be used sure, for, like, sex and stuff. Sure, but then leave the pleasure models there. Like, don't make the worker bots act like humans. That's yes. W- that's why you have the rebellion, because they're like, we don't want to be doing the stuff you're making us do. Yeah, if you if you are treating them as machines, as tools to mine these other planets for future colonization, if that's the basic purpose of most of these, which appears to be, again, there's uh, pleasure models, there's different models, but generally it seems like worker or soldier models are the top uh, requested ones, from what I can tell. Yeah. And why would you want them to seem extremely human and develop emotions if you're sending them off on a shuttle to go to somewhere else on their own? Yeah. You, Wouldn't you want something really basic make... that just accepts commands and does whatever you tell it? Doesn't even need to look human. In fact, in a lot of cases, it's probably more efficient if it is like a tank or something, you know? like. Well, it's what you're basically doing is fabricating slavery when you could not be doing slavery, you know? Yeah. Like, if you just have a machine that's a machine, like... If you go to a construction site, you're not going to be like, oh, look at all those vehicles that are slaves. But if you have an right. entire society of robots that are built to have human emotions and feelings and act like humans, then you're, you're basically you're doing slavery. Yeah, definitely. So why would you do that? Although at the same time, we're, we as actual human races in the real world are also trying to develop robots constantly. And sometimes we are using them for... Other stuff, other than you know, construction machines or whatever, we actually are building like human-like things. Well, see, I don't think the hum- making human-like robots is wrong. I just think they did it, and then they just used them for wrong purposes. When if you have the technology to do that, you have technology to just make also just working things that aren't like that. Just use the human ones for something else. Right. It just it just seems kind of weird. Seems Although of, quick, seems really fucked up. Quick side note, and maybe this is a big issue that I'm just not aware of, but. Also, maybe it's because the technology isn't quite there yet, but I don't seem to see a lot of people um, kind of protesting the idea of creating human-like things. But cloning, like, I remember that was, like, a big deal. Like, we can't clone a sheep because, like, that's blasphemy, but we can make, like, a human-like robot that we even attempt to give logic and emotions to. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe there are people that have big issues with that, but... There's a a quote from Clerks, too, about the making of robots, and I wish I could remember it, but... There it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, since we're already in this subject, um, let's say that we do create these robots. Uh, not exactly like replicants, of course, but, you know, whatever we end up making. Mm-hmm. Are they going to kill us all? I mean, absolutely. Because that's like every science fiction thing ever basically says, yes, they will absolutely do that. But we are still obsessed. Like, we got to do it. Here's the thing. If we do get to that point, I actually hope they kill us because we've we've been predicting it in every source of media for <laughs> since the beginning of time, and we still did it anyway. So I feel like we deserve yeah. it at that point. <laughs> like, I mean, other than like maybe Star Wars or something like that, or I guess Star Trek also has uh, like androids and, and robots. But almost every science fiction that has them included, it's a bad thing. It's something where they're going to well, hurt us, they're going to kill us, they're going to take over. I think uh, Star Wars doesn't have super advanced per se robots i would say they're more right. like service service bots and star trek they actually incorporate them into the society so i feel like that's the two contributing things why i feel like more realistically is what the other things show where we're not going to contri- we're not going to have them emerge into society we're going to see them as outsiders and we're going to make them do all the work we don't want to do so that's true and also i mean with star trek the whole point at least of the older shows was that it was supposed to be the perfect society yeah. sure there's like evil aliens and stuff but like everything's supposed to just be perfect like it wouldn't make sense if there was like it turns out the robots we made are going to kill us like that's so against what star trek is about so that universe wouldn't really fit with that but yeah every other kind of more down-to-earth realistic franchise is like hey don't do that do (laughs) not do that and we're just like uh we got it and they're not and they're not wrong i mean like i feel like if we make robots it's absolutely what we're gonna do yeah it just seems pretty much on par for sure i mean um that's one of the reasons i love ex machina so much because that was you know, you can watch something like Alien or Blade Runner and be like, sure, maybe someday. Ex Machina was one where I was like, this could happen right now, and this is the most believable version of that oh, happening yeah. that oh, I've yeah. ever absolutely. seen. I, yeah, um, absolutely. But anyways, uh, email us. Let us know. Are we going to die from robots? <laughs> um, I mean, immediately what we're going to do when we make robots is the two things we're going to try and accomplish first is make it do work for us, and how can we fuck it? That's Yes. I mean, that's we're, just... we're already, like, 
really into both of those. Yes. Yeah. Like, as you know, I'm not saying, like, you and me personally, but, like, anytime you see an article about robots, it's either, look at what this robot can do, it's amazing, or look at what these guys did to this robot, isn't exactly. this messed up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, we're sort of already living a Blade Runner. I mean, it's almost uh, 2019, which is when the original set, mm-hmm. so... A couple more lot, years, I, I buy it. Two years, a lot, lot can happen in two years. That's true. Um, as far as uh, other technology stuff, um, I do think it's interesting that they've also made all these animals. This is something I've always liked about Blade Runner. Uh, presumably, like we just used up all of resources on Earth in this universe, and like just probably destroyed rainforests and whatever. Uh, I mean. I, from what I understand, um, the new one looks like it's going to go outside of the city a little bit, just from some of the teasers and stuff we've seen. But in the original Blade Runner, I always sort of had the idea that this whole planet is just a big city at this point. Yeah. Um, well, that's not, what it maybe kind not of like presents the whole itself as. A city, but more or less, this is kind of like Destiny. This is the last city, per se, or something. Like, you know, this is where most humanity is at. at this point. Yeah. Um,. But yeah, I just always got the impression that like there's like nothing else really. Like you can't like go out to the forest because like they're just yeah. Because like one. well, with the new ones, like you're saying with the teaser trailers, like if we see anything, it, it does look like it's outside the city, but also it looks like it's all like sand. So it looks yeah. like everything's pretty kind of desolate now. Um, for sure. So and so we know the animals aren't extinct because they do make references to real animals. Like, is that a real owl? Is that a real snake? Yeah. Um. So they somewhere somebody has some real animals, but they are, are apparently extremely expensive and extremely scarce. Um, I wonder how much it costs to get a fake animal. They make it seem like it's cheap or cheaper. No, well, not necessarily because when he goes to the snake vendor, he it's he the reason you can track him down is because he says not many people can afford my snakes. Oh, uh, okay. So it already I was, cause like I was just thinking of the line sport. where the girl's like, you think I'd be in this place if I could afford a real snake? Yeah. Which is so a great like, line, by the way. That yeah. is just a great line of dialogue. So I'm assuming they must; those other animals must be really rare that if, like, getting a replicant snake is already really expensive, and then getting a real one's even more expensive. You know, I hadn't even thought about this, too, but um, how does that work with food? Yeah, I was actually wondering what we were talking about what to talk about because that's why I brought up the replicants eat food. Because I was wondering, right. like, is the food they have also fabricated or how does that work? Yeah, and also, like, well, I guess when it says these animals are fake, are they clones or are they machines as well? Sure. I got the impression they were machines. I did too. Because, um, yeah, no, they're definitely machines because the guy makes them. I guess you guys you can make a clone too, I guess. I don't know. Because they make it seem like when you make the animals craftsmanship. And not science. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be machines. But that does raise the question of, like, but, then what is everybody eating? I mean, well, we I guess everybody's Decker vegan? Eat, well, we only see Decker eat noodles, don't we? That's it, that's all he ever eats is noodles. Uh, I think that's all we see him eat, yeah. And there's so, definitely a lot of, like, noodle stands around. So yeah. I guess that's it. We just got just noodles. noodles. <laughs> that's all we got. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I hadn't ever thought about that before, but that's actually a really interesting point. Um... What else do we got? Uh, I guess um, let's talk about the other kind of technologies they have other than that, too. So flying cars is obviously one mm-hmm. of the cooler ones. Um, now, does everybody have flying cars or is it only the police that have flying cars? Um, there's hub, there's hub I don't cars, think it's everybody, but I yeah, think it is more than the police. I think probably, okay. you know, people will have a little bit of money because there's definitely a lot. There's shots where there seems to be a good amount of cars flying around. Okay, okay. I actually think it would probably be a lot more, but it's probably a, kind of a budget thing. It was like, sure, we can't have a hundred flying cars. It can't look like Coruscant and Star Wars too. Right. Um, my favorite example of <laughs> science fiction. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm curious in the new one if it'll have like more population because it seems like that's kind of the problem in some of these shorts as they're talking about like the off-world colonies aren't as good as we thought they were and now we're kind of running low on those supplies there too Mm -hmm. so we really need to push further into space um so i'm curious like how bad like crowding has gotten and i mean if it was already that bleak in the original blade runner you know now we're 30 years later like how are people doing on supplies now? Especially right. after this big event they talk about, which is shown in one of the sh- shorts, which is this big blackout. This, like, worldwide blackout. Yeah, yeah, which um, really fucks shit up. 
Yeah, and it seems like that's something they're going to mention a lot. Just from some of the little teasers, they'll, they'll mention it like, oh, this is something from before the blackout. Like, it seems like that event um, is actually going to be very, very important going forward. Um, well, and also, with that one also established that replicants became completely uh, illegal. Which I would make right. think hurt their ability to get more resources, too, because then they wouldn't have anybody else to go to planets they can't go to. Although I am surprised that they became completely illegal then... And not before uh, when they literally killed the guy who ran the company that created it. Yeah, them. <laughs> I I almost wonder if that was just a thing they did. So just like, because that's what they probably made it a couple years after the other one. And they're just like, okay, here's a cool way to tell a story. Because I feel like that would probably yeah. definitely make them illegal at that point. Because it wasn't even the Although, I mean, I guess to be fair, they were on. originally illegal on Earth, period. That was the point True. of Blade Runners. They weren't supposed True. to be on Earth at all. Um, um but because even go to the point where it's not even the Nexus Seven, it's the Nexus Eight, and that's short. So they've even did a whole other model before the the ones we see in that. Yeah, short. and I wonder who's designing those now. Like who took over Tyrell? Yeah. Like he was supposedly the genius that made their brains. Um, yeah. So I don't know. Well, it, is, it doesn't show that biological guy. He doesn't die, so maybe he did it. Uh, which guy? The guy who's friends with Tyrell. He didn't die, did he? Oh, JF Sebastian. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, they killed him? Okay. I don't remember. They don't show him dying, but uh, when Deckard is listening to the radio, um, they're oh, like, the body right. found that's next right. to this guy was J.F. Sebastian. And that's how Deckard knows to go to that guy's address. That's right. Um, speaking of, like, the the world and stuff, I am really curious if the new movie is going to go into these off-world colonies that we talked about. Like, it seems like it's probably going to stay on Earth and maybe some of the surrounding areas. Like, it seems like we'll explore a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But I always thought it was interesting that, like, the first one talks about all these off-world colonies, but we don't really know anything about yeah, what those are like. I really want to know what the travel is like from there to there. Because, I mean, as, like, everybody knows, planes are actually really far away from us. So, yeah. like, how are they doing these, like, travel things? What are they doing to, to get there? Well, and I wonder, too, like, off-world colonies, so did we, like terraform parts of mars or did we find other planets way farther away that were sure. already suited for our living like are these artificial cities or are they natural places that we've taken right. over um right. i don't know um because and yeah i also don't want to know how space travel works i i do know that there's a lot of uh kind of fan speculation fan theories and i think uh ridley scott has even kind of hinted at some of these himself that uh alien and blade runner are two connected universes oh okay. um which, as far as technology, kind of makes sense. Makes sense Alien yeah. has all these robots that are intelligent and can blend in with people. Um, it also has big evil corporations and, uh, you know, faster than light travel. So mm-hmm. that does make a lot of sense. Um, I don't ever personally, like, I hope that in the new Blade Runner movie, a xenomorph doesn't just jump on Ryan Gosling. <laughs> I don't want like, it to go that far. I kind of but I like. Know. <laughs> you find that out would that... be crazy if like the, the climax of the movie is he gives birth to an alien. We find um, out that Deckard wasn't... Uh... A, um, was actually a xenomorph the whole entire time and not a replicant <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly all we need is or at least got to ruin two of his of his universes <laughs> well then really Scott, uh, right this second one just, no he, but he like produced it or whatever I, mean, okay. I, I doubt he was that involved actually i'm sure it's just like the producer like now i get all the money because my name is on it right um so I, I actually don't know his level of involvement um what else we got um anything <laughs> <laughs> other than the decker thing i think it's all we have right yeah so i mean we were just joking about um what if decker's this the big question we, you're left i mean there's a lot to think about with the original blade runner um in terms of themes and stuff but the big story question everybody would have is was decker a replicant um which is something i do not want the new one to answer and i believe the director has said he is not going to answer that in this new one. Oh, that's good um, i mean because if you think about it th- I thought that would, like, because a lot of people have the same thought, too. Like, oh, if you have, the, have him in the new one, it's a dead giveaway. But we don't actually know. I mean, it could, it's fully possible he could be some sort of model we don't know about. And it did make it seem like that the Nexus 6 are the only ones that have the age thing unplanted on them. Yes, I believe that is the case. I, From what I can understand, and I don't, I don't know specifically because I don't think they 100% say this, but it sounds like Nexus 5 and, and before that weren't built with a limited lifespan. Yeah, it sounds the like the Nexus that was 6 the... were designed to be so human like that they would eventually gain emotions and that's why yeah. they got the lifespan. It was it was the um answer to the problem like if they if they did start going out of control they only live 4 years anyway, so not a big deal. Yeah. Um although possibly the Nexus 5 would have been able to develop emotions as well because Decker does seem to have some emotions. Yeah, um, or, I mean, it could be even some crazy thing that we'll probably never answer where, like, maybe he was a prototype model that they were testing out and stuff like that. Yeah. 
Um, although I do think it's it's kind of cool if it was like, hey, we've got these uh, replicants, which is a big problem. How do we stop them? Well, why don't we just make another replicant do it? Right. Like, the, I love that. That's great. The only thing I think that doesn't make sense, though, is the amount of pain and damage that all the other replicants can take, and he obviously doesn't seem to have the same sort of capacity for. Like, he doesn't seem as strong. He seems like he definitely can't withstand as much physical pain like the other ones do. That's true, but that could possibly also be depending on what model he was. That's um, true, but I feel like if you built someone to specifically chase down replicants, you'd give them some sort of strength stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because like, like you, you know they're going to go up against these superhuman strength robots. Yeah, that's true. Um, I guess it's possible, though, that maybe he was originally don- designed for something else, but then he, they put him into this role. Or maybe he right. even, like went rogue or something. I don't know. There's yeah, a lot of things that could have happened. Yeah, yeah so many um, Especially if he doesn't know he's a replicant, um, which yeah. I don't think he does. Um, so maybe maybe he wasn't designed to catch replicants. Maybe it's like an ironic thing that just kind of happened. Um, right. Yeah, I would assume if he is a replicant, he doesn't know. I think he has the same thing with the girl where he has fake memories implanted. Yes. Um, and I think with all the pictures they have shown around, I think it is kind of sometimes seem like that's tr- kind of what they're trying to hint at as well. Because yeah. the girl has all those photos around, too, of, of herself, but they're not real. So it's like, okay, well, he has all these photos around, which kind of seems to be in the same theme. Yeah. I mean, again, I hope the new movie doesn't address if De- Deckard is a replicant. I don't want that definitively answered. But yeah. that being said, I for sure think he is. Oh, you do? Um, I don't, I I don't do. know. I'm not, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. The thing that always does it for me, and this is what a lot of people go to, it's kind of the big one, is the unicorn. Um, that was his dream. I don't think he went and told anybody else about that. And the fact that that guy... Uh, leaves him the unicorn to me was seemed to be like a a note saying like hey I know because why else would he know know about the unicorn so can you explain the significance of the unicorn because I've heard people talk about it and I don't understand it so I don't know necessarily like thematically the significance but I mean it's the it's the dream Deckard has when he's daydreaming he, yeah, yeah. he pictures that unicorn yeah I mean, we only see it once in the movie but I assume that's like a recurring dream is but, the assumption I got that guy, so that guy who does origami, does he always just make the unicorn, or does he make other stuff too? He makes other stuff. Because early in the movie, he makes he makes another origami thing before we before Decker has that dream. So I don't know if it was the same thing. Yeah, he makes two other things, but they they're different. I don't remember what the first one is. I'm trying to. Okay. I think it's like a, a swan or something, and the second one's like a man out of like okay. a matchstick. Um, but the the third one is the only one that's the unicorn. Um, because okay. to me, I always saw that as like he these little things he leaves are like. Not just like, oh, I can make origami. I'm a cool, talented guy. It's more like right. little messages he's leaving. Right. Um, again, I don't think that definitively says it. I think it's very much still open to debate. I'm just saying, personally, I think he is. Um, yeah. But I love not knowing either way. I, I haven't read many fan theories. On, I mean, I know it's a fan theory, but I haven't read many like people's arguments for it. So I'm sure I could be convinced. But just watch the movie on my own. I didn't, I didn't feel like they like really threw that impression in at you. I didn't feel that way the first time. It was a few more times I watched it that I started to kind of feel that way. Um, I don't think that it's there saying, like... I don't think it's one of those things where it's like, hey, you idiots, of course he is. Look at the unicorn. I don't, yeah, I don't exactly. think that. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that's meant to be kind of vague, where it's like, right. if you do think he's a replicant, this is a good point for that side of the argument. Right. Yeah, I but it doesn't think prove that he is. I am definitely, like, don't think it's out of the question. I just, like, never saw it and was like, oh, okay, I totally think so. Um, I will say, and I'm not... I'm, you, people can look this up if they want... I'm not going to say the thing, but Ridley Scott, which is this is something I take beef with, did definitively say what he his intention was on yes or no. Oh, right. um, okay. If people are interested, they can look up to see what his answer was. I wish I didn't know his answer just because I think that you shouldn't give that answer. Right. I think that um, one way or the other, even if it's the side that I had agreed with or if it's not the side I agree with, I think it's better to leave it vague. Yeah. Um, it's the same thing with the ending of Taxi Driver. I remember reading a thing where the guy who wrote it was like, oh, it's this. And it's like, hey, it's you left the movie. It'd, it'd be like if Chris Nolan was like, uh, yep, it was a dream the whole time in Inception. Yeah. Sorry, guys. It's Like, come I'm, on. I know it doesn't make sense because they're the creators, so whatever they say sh- should be canon. But anytime a creator makes something after the fact and they say, like, oh, yeah, this is confirmed, I don't treat that as canon whatsoever. Yeah. Like anything I don't, J.K. I don't Rowling has said about be. Harry Potter afterwards I just think it's, is to me nothing. Yes, I, I agree with that. I just think it's frustrating that creators would want to do that because they left it... 
I mean, the Rowling one's a little bit different, but like if it's an ending that was left vague, the creator, the director decided that. He wanted the mystery. Yeah. Exactly. And then to later on go and be like, oh, no, no mystery. Here you go. Here's the answer. Mm-hmm. That's so, like, what happened in your life that you decided to go back on that? Yeah, exactly. That's so dumb to me. Um, I mean, maybe they thought people would, like, get really excited about that and would create more buzz, but I think it's 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 stupid. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I... I I am sure that there's a billion articles posted. You won't believe what Ridley Scott confirmed about Blade Runner. And it's just like, yeah. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's all we have. Um, normally we you know, try to get a lot more into the universe, but Blade Runner so far is only one movie. I'm sure the new one will add a lot more stuff, but we wanted to go ahead and get this out there um, before the new one just so that you know, it'd be relevant. Um, but uh, we're both – are you seeing it this weekend? I'm seeing it this weekend. Um, I'll probably see this weekend. I think so. Okay. I really hope I like it. The reviews so far have been good. I've been avoiding the details of the reviews, but they've mm-hmm. been positive, I've noticed. Um, I've heard it called a masterpiece, so we'll see. Yeah. The one thing I'm curious about, and this is what I've thought about from the beginning since this was ever announced or even rumored, is though I love the original Blade Runner, it is extremely slow. A lot yeah. of people think it's really overly boring, and I don't agree, but I totally get why they think that and where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just curious how this new movie will handle that. It's it's a big budget movie. It's getting a big release. It's got huge names in it. People who don't even like or haven't seen the original are going to go see it. There's no way in 2017 a major studio allows a movie that is like that slow and that uh, you know deliberate with everything to be released. I don't think it's going to be a fast paced blockbuster explosion no, fest. No, but I'm just curious where in between those extremes it will fall. Fall right. It, like, will it pretty much be an action movie, or will I mean, it be another detective story? Based on some of the th- scenes we've seen, I think it does meet somewhere in the middle because we see Go- Gosson going around and like doing the whole doing, you know, hitting the beat and asking questions. But then you also see things like vehicles crashing through windows and shit like that too. So, yeah. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I'm I'm very curious about it, um, and I'm curious how like really big fans of the original will like it too. Like, will they think it's too far from what the original was? Or will right. it be close enough that they like? I don't know. I mean, I'm just Ryan this Go- is Ryan Gosling's in it, so I'm gonna love it no matter what because he's just, you know, it's Ryan Gosling. So. Yeah, I love. I, yeah, I do love the idea of him being in this because um, he's been good in like a few other movies in recent years. But since Drive, I don't feel like he's had like a big this kind of role, like just an awesome role That's where you true. go. Ryan Gosling is, is just kicking ass. Like I want yeah. that again for him. Um, well, I mean, he had. I mean, not kicking ass. That's right. I was gonna say he had a. Um, fucking la la land but that wasn't really like right god's yeah ass. <laughs> no yeah i mean he's had some big roles that i really liked him in but like mm-hmm. the kind of movie where you're like i just want to nerd out over ryan gosling all day because exactly. of this movie it's been yeah. a while since since we've had that for sure plus it's um, gonna be him and harrison ford so that's pretty awesome so, yeah i'm also curious how much harrison ford's in it um yes. my prediction is and actually not that much i don't like jared leto but his character seems pretty interesting so I'm okay I liked him that. okay in that short they did. I thought he worked for that. Yeah. I hate him as a person, and I never yes, want to have to talk to him. Person. Yeah. But uh, he can be okay in certain roles. Like, he was great in um, uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Like, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. he can be good when he is in the right place. Whenever he reminds um, you, whenever he makes you not realize it's Jared Leto, he's okay. Although, now moment, that I now that I learned that the original choice for that role was David Bowie, I think that's just so... Uh, that just yeah, sucks. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, imagine if... I know it's not possible with, like, how the times lined up, but just imagine if this movie could somehow have come out with that character as David Bowie. Yeah, that would have been great. That would have been amazing. They should have um, uh, just got an impersonator. Good enough. Yeah. Um, they should have just had that character be a teapot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be all right. Um, anyways, uh, that's going to be it for this week, um, or this episode, I should say. We don't do this weekly for sure. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know what we're going to do next time or when we're going to do it. It won't be that long, but, you know, a couple, few weeks. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, But if you have any uh, other questions or comments about Blade Runner or your thoughts on it, um, you can email us at tsofpodcast at gmail.com. You could also hit us up on YouTube in the comment section. Hit us up on Twitter, twitter.com slash thewetrats. Um, I don't think I said that in this show, but we are the wet rats. Um, If you're watching on YouTube, you already know. But uh, let us know. And um, if you do like this podcast, if you happen to be one of those people, um, maybe suggest another universe you'd like to see us talk about next time since we don't really know what we're going to do for next time. 
Uh, and we'll see if maybe we'll do it, unless it's something that sucks, and then we'll ignore your comment. Um, <laughs> uh, I feel like if yeah. anybody actually mentions this or emails us for it, by default alone, by being the first person to email, we'll just do it. Whatever it is. Probably, unless it really sucks. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm going to say right now 100%, whatever you say. We're done. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll agree. If, if it's like, <laughs> I don't even want to throw any ideas out there. I'll let people be creative. Uh, anything at all. Um, that's all. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> goodbye. Bye.